Welcome to Down the Road. I get a chance to visit with Doug Lear today. That's right. We're going to talk a little game and fish. We're going to talk a little outdoors. And, of course, I'll ask Doug about these drought conditions and what it means for wildlife. We're heading into that fall. I'm sorry to say it, but we're heading into that fall. And come September, it's already hunting season. So as somebody who hunts a lot and fishes a lot, I can tell you I need to talk to Doug Lear. But first... Uh, Kevin Baker. Now, who's Kevin? Well, he's a historian and a journalist, and uh, he's done some work that has really caught my attention. Let's bring him in. Kevin, good to have you coming down the road with us. Hey, thanks for having me on. Sorry to hear about the drought. Uh, yeah. I got to go through uh, all, about pretty much all of North Dakota by train a few years ago, and what a beautiful state. I, I hate to think of it, you know, going through this, and I, I hate to think about forest fires and that, but... Uh, what a terrific place. Well, thank you for that. I mean, really, we, we love it, too. Uh, we think it's really beautiful. Plus, it's got pheasants, Kevin, yeah. which, which, which is the key to any life. So I want to talk to you a little bit about political and, and some work that you did in there. It's called The Tragedy of the Cuomos. Uh, everyone knows that Andrew Cuomo yesterday resigned uh, as governor of New York. Uh, your piece, uh, the, the alt, you know, really bases on the talent and the tragedy. If you could describe to people what you wrote. Well, I was writing about why it was that the uh, Cuomo's uh, father and son, Mario uh, and Andrew, never really did go for the whole, you know, the whole enchilada here. You know, uh, New York's had a lot of political dynasties over the over the years, Roosevelt. Uh, Hamiltons, uh, all sorts of people. Um, but usually they went for it in the end. They usually went for the presidency, uh, not so much the Cuomos. And I, you know, it's really been kind of a mystery about what held them back. And, uh, and this is sort of what I addressed in the article. So why? I mean, why? I, I've got the article in front of me, uh, you know, but why is it? it what's your gut tell you on, on the why of why they never went for it all? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there were all kinds of theories. You know, there were really scurrilous, completely unfounded rumors that Mario had some kind of mob connection, not a scintilla of evidence about it. Uh, but I think it really boiled down to the fact that they just felt extremely comfortable in Albany, uh, a very cloistered state capital uh, where... Um, uh, he's moving the cat there. Uh, very quick. <laughs> she likes to get in on these zooms here. How many pe how many people in this COVID world have had their caps or cats, I should say, on on TV? They've, do you think, Kevin? She's taking this opportunity to become stars. Uh, yeah, she's uh, he, he. But you know, he was very comfortable in this world, as was his father, who all kinds of people were asking to run back in '88 to '92. Uh, but you know, he never seemed to be that comfortable outside of that. He never, you know, they always have these small coteries of advisors. Uh, they rarely like to leave the state, period. Um, Andrew did become a, a cabinet member for a while under, uh, under President Clinton. But, um, you know, they trust very few people out of those immediate circles. Mario's main advisor was always his son, uh, who was kind of a political prodigy. But, um, you know, this is this very insular world they created for themselves and i think sadly in that world they felt they could treat the people around them any way they wanted to well that's part of the story here i mean that that's part of it that really got my attention which is you know when the fighting starts when somebody's after you uh the, the, you need friends and i'm not sure yeah. he had a friend in the world when it came to andrew uh is it fair to to say that these two men were very similar in some ways, uh, because I think Mario Cuomo, uh, I think if you look back in the history of it, I don't see as many failings as what I do with Andrew. And I'm not just talking about the current ones. I'm talking about governance and, and how you build up a base, a foundation of support. And so were these two really alike, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I, I you know, interesting question. I think Aunt Mario was a much more developed human being and a better governor as well. You know, I, I've talked to aides and speechwriters for both men, including people who knew both of them. And while they found Mario to be 
a, a kind of acerbic individual at times, a tough boss. They respected him and found that he generally treated them with at least a, a certain respect. Uh, and, and I think he was very much better at that, very much better at management along with the political rhetoric. I think Andrew tended to buy friends. You know, he had an army of friends, as I think the Times described, the New York Times described it today, but uh, they were kind of bought. I mean, it, there was a, a um, major investigative piece years ago which found that New York builds the most expensive mile of subway track in the world. And this is typical of how Andrew Cuomo operated, which is that he sort of paid off uh, the contractors, he sort of paid off the unions, he gave everybody what they wanted. Uh, but in the end, you know, it's like any friends you have to buy. Uh, how, how dedicated are they really to you? And I think they, he felt that that money would substitute for political allegiance, for believing in the man's message the way it had with his father. You know, when you look at this, and, and the audience that you're speaking to right now, obviously from the Midwest, uh, Kevin, yeah. you know, and it's a different style of politics here. I mean, it really is. There, There's, you know, some of the inner politics falls within the party itself. Everyone knows that these are red states, and occasionally a blue candidate wins. But, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the politics all happen behind the scene. And so when okay. something like this happens in a state with as many people in it as New York, it's going to get the attention uh, politically because sure. we, quite frankly, don't have much to talk about <laughs> politically. <laughs> That's just yeah. the truth. And so when something like this happens, um, I guess the nation's eyes uh, come upon it. And, and so when you say that they never took that jump, it agreed, but the opportunity was there. I mean, the, the, the sure. notoriety was there. Uh, yeah. After that convention where Andrew Cuomo um, spoke, Everyone was watching him during COVID. Everyone was watching him. Mario Cuomo gave one of the best speeches at a convention anyone could possibly give, which is the reason, as you pointed out, that he was asked to run for president during that era. Why not? I mean, in, in right. terms of the talent to do the job, it sure seems to me that talent was there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely the talent was there. And, and the son had his talents. The son had to... A uh, fervent following in some quarters, and still does to this day in uh, in New York. But you know that's the thing. It's interesting. It's New York has this very cosmopolitan reputation, and certainly the city is. It's one of the great world cities. Uh, but you know a lot of it uh, is not that different from the Midwest, from the Plain States. Uh, Albany itself, the capital, is a very kind of rundown uh, old river town. Uh, that most everything people do besides politics is gone. It's very much a company town. And they got very comfortable in that. And bringing yourself out on the hustings, going around to primaries in other states, uh, you know, being conscious of saying the right thing or the wrong thing in New Hampshire or Texas, uh, that was not something they were at all comfortable doing, despite the talent and despite the national following really uh, that both men had at, at certain points. Well, we joked earlier about, uh, you know, whether or not we're going to be able to go out and hunt some pheasants uh, later on this year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they would have been comfortable with that, uh, the setting of it. <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the whole, yeah. hey, this is how you connect with the middle of this country. I, yeah. You know, yeah. in, in terms of the Cuomo name, uh, how does this uh, affect what is, I think, a good legacy for Mario? Uh, how does... Because if you bring up Cuomo after this, after what Andrew did, I think you're going to find that the people are going to remember that more than anything else. I, I hope so. And, I, and there's a kind of terrible effort underway uh, by some opportunistic Republicans in New York now to change the name of the bridge that uh, Andrew had built that he named after his father, the Mario Cuomo Bridge across the Hudson. And that's terrible. You know, Mario Cuomo should have a bridge named after him. He was a good governor for New York at a time when uh, there were a lot of problems, you know, that he was battling in the in the state, in the city. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, I hope his legacy does survive, even though it was a little tarnished by the, uh, by the sun. Um, I guess when, when you look at his speech yesterday, Andrew Cuomo didn't admit anything. 
I mean, if you tear it down, you know, he admitted that, hey, uh, in, the, in this era, obviously, um, you know, he wasn't in touch with it. Is it true? And, and the reason I ask if it's true is because of this. Uh, if you look at what Al Franken did, it's my personal belief that Al Franken should still be a United States senator. Uh, and that part of being a comedian is doing some of the things that he was doing when entertaining troops. And so I'm not a big believer that Al Franken falls into the, the you know, the target of the Me Too movement. And I think people jumped on him too quick. And I, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I thought my sister did uh, when she called for his resignation. And so it is, should we all, as men, learn that this time has changed and that some of us really don't even know how to toe the line or dance around it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there are a lot of gray spots in this area, and I'm very much for due process. You know, I think all these things should be, people should get a hearing. There was a candidate for mayor here in our mayoral primary, which is just completed, and people came out of the past with very spurious accusations, first one woman, then another, and they were connected to other campaigns, and they said, you know, he had done something inappropriate 20, 30 years ago. And, but the, the difference is he stood up and denied this categorically and stuck it out through the campaign, and he lost. But this was at least him saying, like, I did not do this. Boom. Andrew Cuomo has his lawyer take uh, long pot shots at each of his accusers, uh, and then before he faces any kind of public forum, you know, he was not actually charged with a crime. This was just an investigation. He could have gone to criminal court. He could have gone to civil court. He could have gone to impeachment hearings and made his case if he was innocent. Yeah. Uh, and I certainly would have if, if somebody had accused me of some of these things. Um, you know, I, uh, it's, it's, I think you have to kind of fight it out if you are innocent. I don't think you can just take a pot shot at your accusers and then run away, which was essentially what he did. Um, and I wonder if that was to leave some of his political future open still or not. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think there are false accusations, and that's a really bad thing, and I think that's something we have to fight. But you won't fight it by just, um, you know, by just saying, I didn't do it, this person's a liar, and, and running away. In the end, what was it that made him write the letter? What was it that made him say, I resign? Was it the threat of impeachment? Or was it the relationship he had with the attorney general and the potential of criminal charges, which both you and I know are still out there? Yeah, and I, I think it was more the threat of impeachment. You know, his uh, the attorney general was sort of seen as his creature. Uh, Letitia James is somebody who had an outstanding record uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, but she had got his endorsement for attorney general, which is probably why she won the nomination and election. She was surely very reluctant to do this, but she did it. She did it thoroughly. And, you know, this came back with this. But this was only to be, you know, she had her conclusions in this, but it was only to be this report. And it was up to other people to take it and run with it. And I think what it looked like is that they were going to do just that. You know, they were going to do that in the state legislature. And, excuse me, and uh, that was going to, uh, he was not going to have the support there, too. Um, Last one, I promise. Uh, well, no, no. I, I might I, promise. I uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but in terms of uh, the debate, uh, I got into a big debate on my radio show, and the whole premise of it was uh, this individual was a conservative caller, and mm -hmm. uh, he asked me why I wasn't harder on Andrew Cuomo. And I said I supported his removal uh, before he actually made the announcement. I said, but why weren't you, as conservatives that are that are so happy, that are dancing in the streets about Andrew Cuomo having to resign, where were you when these accusations and truths were found out about Donald Trump? Uh, and is there just a huge hypocrisy there? And will this open up the debate again, or are we just done with the Donald Trump era? Oh, I think it's such a big hypocrisy, it's beyond hypocrisy. There has to be some new name for it. You know, I noticed Elise Stefanik, who is a Republican representative from uh, New York, they, they just removed Lynn Ch Liz Cheney because she dared to speak the truth 
about uh, about Mr. Trump and replaced her as the number three representative in the congressional caucus, uh, the Republicans. And, you know, she came out there and called him for Cuomo's immediate impeachment and arrest. And at the same time, she's a diehard Trumper, you know, so you tell me how that adds up. And I think that sort of braze blatant hypocrisy uh, is really killing uh, our political process. How do you debate someone like that who is so openly uh, just for the people in her party and not for others? And I think this is a good thing. I know a lot of Democrats I know are very apprehensive about this. They feel they're being forced to play on, with different rules than the Republicans are. I think this is a very good thing. I think things like this, painful though they may be, show that we have some principles as a party, show that we have some, you know, show that we value the law and we value justice above the man. And I'm not sure that's true, horribly enough, uh, in the Republican Party, you know, well, anymore. It, clearly, you can make the point that uh, Democrats, high-profile Democrats, including the President of the United States, told Andrew Cuomo it's time to go. Uh, yeah. But you never saw any high-profile Republicans tell President Trump that this is unacceptable and you need to exactly. deal with it and it's time to go. So, um, Kevin, thank you. Could do it all day. Appreciate getting a chance to visit with you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Nice to uh, talk to people in North Dakota. You bet. I uh, want to talk to you about Summit Carbon Solutions. Who are they? What are they going to do? How does this affect us? We'll talk about it when we come back right here down the road. Hi folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Hi, Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide-angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage-eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best-selling atomic beam flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit bynighthero.com. That's bynighthero.com. Order now. <laughs> Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury? After taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome to maculopathy, which is sight threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Let's, let's take the time to talk about Summit Carbon Solutions. Who is Summit Carbon Solutions? 
Well, they're a company, a private company now, uh, that goes about in taking care of carbon for ethanol plants. There's a number of ethanol plants that are signed up for a project that they're working on. And what that project is going to do, uh, if it gets built, is it's going to grab carbon from these ethanol plants, utilize the tax breaks that are there, it's going to put it in a pipeline, it's going to build that pipeline to North Dakota, and it's going to inject that into our ground. There are areas of North Dakota geologically that are deemed acceptable to storing carbon. Brings up a lot of questions, does it not? Uh, the question of do we want it? I mean, that's a legitimate question. The question of, uh, question of how do we benefit from it? Uh, the question of where do they build it and how do they treat the uh, people that they build it on? Because you're building a pipeline. Now, let me give you a little background on myself. Um, you know me as somebody who works in radio and TV and served in the North Dakota State Senate. You don't realize, probably, that for 23 years, I managed a rural water district. For 23 years, I expanded that district from one county into parts of seven counties. Uh, for 23 years, I worked from taking a rural water system from 500 and some miles to 2,700 miles. That's a lot of construction. So I think I have a right to say how you build pipelines. I do. I think I have a right to say how you go about connecting with farmers and ranchers and small towns when it comes to accessing their land. Now, Summit Carbon Solutions sent a letter out to farmers. And what they said was, I'm, I'm just going to give you the first part of it. Uh, they said the state of North Dakota has determined that the geologic storage of carbon dioxide will help spur economic growth in the state uh, for years to come. Uh, the geologic storage of carbon dioxide will create jobs, support North Dakota businesses, and expand economic opportunities while also reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Furthermore, uh, sequestered carbon dioxide has commercial, industrial, and agricultural uses, including enhanced mineral recovery and crop production. Uh, an effort to promote such interest, uh, Summit Carbon Solutions, which they go on to say, call themselves Summit, uh, and you can go to their website, summon, summitcarbonsolutions.com, has announced that a pipeline project will uh, capture carbon dioxide and permanently sequester it underground. You can go at that website and take a look at what their proposed route is. It goes on to get into some of the specifics. But this is a letter that was sent to farmers and ranchers. Now, the big question of this letter that I have to ask you, for all of you farmers out there, some of which might have received this letter, is this. If somebody tells you that the state of North Dakota has determined that geologic storage of carbon dioxide will help spur economic growth in the state uh, in years to come, does that mean the state of North Dakota has endorsed it? I mean, does it? it is that sentence, the state of North Dakota has determined, uh, okay, does that mean that the state has endorsed this project? I, I don't know. What I do know is the state has to speak up on it. Governor Burgum, not Lieutenant Governor Sanford, has to come forward and speak to it. With all due respect to Brent, who I do respect, respect that's the spokesperson that the governor's office is putting out there to speak to this project. And it's wrong. The, go uh, the governor of North Dakota is the chief executive of North Dakota, and these landowners... These farmers, these ranchers, these individuals where this pipeline is going to go, they deserve the right to know the position of North Dakota. They do. And Governor Burgum, I'm calling on you to tell them where North Dakota is on this. Because pretty soon there's people that are going to be sitting around their kitchen table and asking them to sign easements. Pretty soon that's going to happen. Pretty soon there's going to be town hall meetings. This is not a slam at Summit Carbon Solutions. That's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm getting at here is the words eminent domain could be used for these farmers and ranchers, and they need to know because they're about to negotiate with these guys. They're about to have a debate over whether or not that pipeline can cross their land. And if they're going to negotiate on the best interests of themselves and their family, they need to know where North Dakota is at when it comes to this project. The governor owes it to them to speak to North Dakota's position. One other thing I want to touch upon. Uh, th there's news reports out there 
of Nazi memorabilia being sold down at Sturgis. There's news reports out there about uh, the Confederate flag being uh, sold in Sturgis. We need to hit on that another time uh, when I come back here on Down the Road because it's wrong. It's wrong. We beat them in a war, and we should not be honoring their flags. When we come back, Doug Lear, North Dakota Game and Fish, as we continue our trek down the road. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. How can, how can these people not see that they're just clowns? Ads. We help simplify and educate you on things going on in the legislature and around the country. Asking the hard-hitting questions. But also having Flea Stack and Sid and Marty Croft stuff, and we've talked about that sometimes. <laughs> it's bad. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. I look at the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I look at people that are professionals. Uh, I do. I look at a department that's well run with interest coming at them from all sides. They do. Landowners, hunters, conservationists. I mean, pick a team. But they're all going at them and, and trying to land a punch here and there. But the job that they do. Uh, I think is amazing and that comes from a lifelong hunter and a lifelong advocate for landowners. I was critical of Governor Burgum by not uh, getting word out when it came to this pipeline to the landowners yet. Hopefully he will. But I will tell you this, I'm very appreciative of Governor Burgum when it came to announcing the interim uh, manager of Game and Fish. Uh, the director of Game and Fish is coming from within the department itself. Now, I'm not going to make our next guest speak to that. That isn't fair to him because he potentially could work for him. But I will tell you this. I I'm doing this because I want you to know that in areas where I think the governor has done a good job, I think that needs to be recognized as well. Now, hunting season, right? Hunting season. You got the gun clean or you want to put it away. That's the type of hunter you are. 
You've already found the ammo. It got harder than it was before, mm. but you're thinking about it. Uh, so I want to get a chance to visit with a guy I trust and a guy I'm able to visit with a lot with North Dakota Game and Fish, and that's Doug Lear. He's an outreach biologist with North Dakota Game and Fish. Doug, good to have you back on. It's, it's great to visit with you, Joel, because I, I, I share the same passion that you do. I mean, when you grow up in the Midwest, whether it's North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, if you don't have a passion for the outdoors, you don't have to hunt, you don't have to fish, but you might enjoy a drive on Friday night, maybe before the football game or after the football game, or getting up a little bit early on Saturday, the, the Sunday drive after church. If you can't appreciate North Dakota outdoors if you, and you live up in the Midwest, I don't know what's wrong with you because this is this is a great time to, to get outdoors, Joel. Okay, One, a couple of the small things. I used to uh, get my daughters in the pickup, and I'd drive around, and I'd... I'd say whichever one can get to 10 pheasants first. Mm. Not hunting them. Right. Just driving around, making sure they learned how to see them. Yeah. And to this day, they still talk about it. Uh, and then, it, it, I'm sorry, but I've got to describe this because I thought about it. Uh, Rusty Halverson, uh, a person that I get the privilege of working with on a daily basis, and I were traveling all the way from Williston home. I said, Rusty, what are we going to see more of? Uh, raccoon dead on the road or skunk dead on the road? <laughs> and, and he picked skunk. I picked raccoon. And guess who won? I'm going to go with you. Uh, I didn't. Uh, Rusty you didn't? Oh, no, it was just terrible. I was bet on you. I, I thought so, too. I put my money behind you, Joel. But, and, and, and the thing that you, that you bring to the table is where we're at in the mid part of August is you can, you can feel it in the air. You can see it. Whether it's on the roads or out in the field, we'd rather see it out in the fields. And our early Canada goose season starts on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. And I'm, I'm kind of a purist. I loved when the fall hunting season tipped off or kicked off with the dove season. But I also understand um, in this day and age, the, the combination of having an early Canada goose season in August to help out those landowners, because Lord knows with you know, whatever crop that they were able to get, they don't want to have geese that were in the windrows or, or any problems that they've had with, with geese. But it's also, so you're helping out the landowners, you're providing a hunting opportunity, and at the same point, having an August goose season, if you've got a youngster and they don't want to maybe go out and shoot geese when it's cooler and it's, it's raining and their fingers are cold, you can be out there literally this year probably shooting geese in shorts and a t-shirt. What are the numbers? in terms of people out there goose hunting versus when I was young. I mean, wh what are the numbers and people taking to the field trying to get after the ducks and geese? You know, one of the things that, that we think, because it's not the way it was when you and I were growing up, is, is, is we think, well, we're losing, you know, the waterfowl hunters. We didn't have Canada geese, you know, back in the, in the early yeah. 80s. I mean, you stopped, you didn't shoot them, you took a picture of them. Yeah. So what we've seen is a transition. We don't have as many duck hunters as we had that it's, you know, that that hunt of getting up early, going out to the slough, throwing out some decoys. It, it kind of loses out to um, decoy in Canada geese in August. So there's been a little bit, I would say maybe there's been more of a, a transition to different types of waterfall hunting. You know, ducks, geese, um, the combination together is still strong. It's just you don't see yeah. what, you, what you had seen 30 years ago, Joel. I think a big part of the management of the game, too, when it comes to this, is th this is one area where I don't, I don't think people get mad at out-of-state hunters. Yeah. I, you know, you, you can have I, – I know that the, the Hankinson uh, Motel is full. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, you know the, the duck boats are there. They're all camouflaged up, and those guys are going uptown to docks to have a steak later on. Uh, but, but I do have to say this. I, I used to love getting out there. There was, you, you mentioned Canadian geese. You know, that Canada goose, when they flew in, there was nothing more exciting than that. We would, we would come and we'd bring them to friends saying, ha ha, got one to do. Right. Now it's, it's really not that hard. You can find them. And, and, and that's, I mean, that's kind of, you know, the other side of it is when you have a population that we need to lower. That's why there's a, a goose hunt in August. To, to shoot the ones that were nesting here. Yeah. You wait another month, some of these are going to be migrating south, we'll have other ones moving in. So that's the, the whole purpose of it. And now when you have such a, a high population, you maybe lose the luster of shooting that one Canada goose and plucking it. 
I mean, you know, now you're breasting it out, and some people love to make jerky out of those Canada geese. They make sausage out of it. So you, you can see different uses on it when you have a lot more of them. And that's, that's one of the, the areas that we try to emphasize in, in a, a world that is really so interested in where did my food come from, and they love natural, high-protein, low-fat, wild game is the original free range. I mean, wild game is the original organic. So we're starting to see a stronger interest across the board from the, the new generations of ducks and geese and deer and grouse and pheasants. And that's a, that's a good thing for the future of hunting, Joel. It, it is. I, I will give you one example that doesn't tie in or pertain to what you see. It, I'm just going to give you the example of me. And maybe I'm hiding the fact that there's work to it. You're yep. walking through the slough, you're putting out decoys, you're picking up decoys, you're calling, you're getting up early. So I get that. Pheasant hunting, not so much. Right. But I lost my network. I, I don't believe you shoot something and not make sure when you harvested that that it gets eaten. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I know you believe that too. Yeah. But, but I had these people. Uh, they, they, and, you know, people that generation, even a little bit older than my father was, where if I showed up on their doorstep with a couple of mallards and a, and a hawker, they were like, oh, my God, Joel. And I never had to clean them. Yeah. And I, and I got uh, maybe a pie or some cookies out of it. I mean, it worked out pretty good. They're yeah. Not, they're not here anymore. No, and they're not. And, and it is a little bit of a loss. But I think, I think hopefully as, as we move forward, Joel, we can transition that passion for wild game because, you know, it, it used to be it was like that was a treat. You know, it was, it was, that's why they were, there was a big smile when you were pulling up the road and they knew you might have a, a mallard or, in a, you know, a couple of, maybe some doves and they're like, this is going to be great. And I think that we lost that maybe a little bit in the middle. And I think we're going to start gaining that back because you can see, you can see this next generation going, oh, wow, this is a sharp tailed grouse that was raised on the prairie of the upper Midwest. And, and we're going to put this uh, on the plate. And this is, you know, this is living. This is good stuff. Well, when I was young uh, as well, and I didn't quit right when I was young uh, hunting waterfowl. It, it, I just haven't hunted as many of them. I had a duck stamp not that, that long back, but there was no goose jerky. There yeah. was no goose pepper stick. When, when somebody gives me that now, I'm all over it. Yeah. And so when I say that, you know, it's not going to get eaten, I'm a hypocrite because yep. I'll sure eat it when it's offered. It's just different. Yeah, it is different because when you had one Canada goose, you were that was the Christmas goose. I mean, that mm -hmm. was definitely a treat. And and again, you know, now it's hey, what can we do with these? Can we make pepper stick? Can we make jerky? Can we make sausage? And you know, you you almost turn some of the wild game into I don't want to say art, but it's it's like what can your imagination? I mean, if you can make stir fry out of crane. You can do just about yeah. anything. And, and you're, you're nodding your head because people love that stuff. Exactly. When we come back, I want to talk about the drought a little bit. Yeah. Can we do that? Let's do it. Doug Lear, North Dakota Game and Fish. We're going to talk about what the conditions for hunting are out there. So stay in the rig. We're going to continue to go down the road. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. And as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. 
Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. 1-800-699-0761. Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan, and yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Go for launch 2018 series winner. Without further ado, it is my honors. Welcome back to Down the Road. Uh, you know, if Doug Lear could, if Doug Lear could control uh, the weather, he'd be the most powerful man in the world. <laughs> There's only one person I know that can do that, and uh, that individual uh, isn't on the earth with us. <laughs> Doug, I'm just going to throw this to you. The yeah. drought, drought conditions. What does this mean to game and fish? What does this mean to outdoorsmen? What does this mean to conservationists and farmers and ranchers? You know, the, the first thing that I put out there is, you know, we talked about the early Canada goose season starting on Sunday. So we've got hunting season starting up with early Canada goose, dove season, archery, deer. Um, you know, we're just a couple of weeks away from really starting to get uh, a point where we're going to have people that aren't farmers and ranchers that are going to be heading out into the country. And the, the thing this year is it doesn't matter where you're at. It's drier than it should be. I mean, there, there's pockets at, you know, southeastern North Dakota. There's pockets that have gotten a little more moisture than other places. But we're really trying to get that message out to all of the hunters. Wherever you're traveling, we're not kidding. You have to be so aware of the fire danger index. And, and it's, it's for yourself, but then also keep your eyes open. You might see the first start of a wildfire out there. And as we know, time is of the essence. So if you see something... Um, they'd rather have you call and say, yeah, we already heard about this or we got right. somebody on it versus, I don't know, should I call or shouldn't I call? So that's, that's the first message that we're sending out there. And the next thing is kind of similar to what you have where you hear some, some uh, barley and some wheat reports coming back in. Some spots, not too bad. You know, they, they're almost kind of hesitant to tell you if they had a good field. We're going to see that outdoors this year. It's going to be some, not in those same areas, but in that same concept, is it's not going to be completely desolate of, of pheasants and, and wild game, deer. I mean, we're, we've got deer out there. We've got pheasants from last year that are still around. So it, it's not going to be, you know, doom and gloom. But you're going to have some pockets that, that are going to be better than others. You're going to have some spots. You might have a spot where you see just as many pheasants this year as you saw last year and even more than you saw the year before that. But there's going to be areas, you know, similar to the drought where you're going to have spots where you go, wow, you know, this is, this is really pretty depressing. And, and that's just the reality that we want people to be aware of when they get out there. You're going to find places that maybe you hunted last year or the year before that that you're not going to have the habitat because if there was a place for grass, they were cutting it, mowing it, and bailing it. So you're not going to have the habitat, the wetlands for ducks and geese. Um, not everything is dry, but all of the small ones have dried up. So you move those ducks to ponds that have water, and then you're going to find the hunters. There might be a little more congestion. There might be a little more competition for the spots that do have water. 
every year in the outdoors and hunting is a jigsaw puzzle. And this year, the middle of that jigsaw puzzle is probably going to be a lot of brown in that puzzle. And there's going to be some green spots out there, but just not as many as we'd like to see, Joel. You know, you brought up a point that I wanted to ask you about, which is the habitat itself. Uh, you know, during the wet years, those farmers, uh, they gave up a lot of those areas to the water, yeah. uh, to the potholes. Now uh, they can get after it. They can get in there. They can chisel dig around it. They can find a way to access that land, put a, a little more crop in. Are you seeing some of that? Or is that is that something that, that you managing uh, game and mm -hmm. me hunting game really have to take a look at and understand? I think I think we do see that is the, the farmer sees the best crop or sometimes the only crop is in that little indentation that had still had a little snow and a little water in the spring the only place that maybe they got crop in, in maybe that 40 acres and moving forward with that you know next year that's going to be a spot that's going to you know that's that's going to be planted um, you see that with uh, you know any kind of hayland and any kind of grassland going into the winter that's the other x factor is when you don't have you didn't have the growth and what did grow you you know you took it off for you know for hay and you're not going to have that cover the you know the cover for the pheasants this winter just like it is for the farmers and the ranchers mm -hmm. the the domino moving forward is not a good situation and you know we're all praying for rain to grow some habitat for the for the winter side of things to to help those critters out this fall to keep the fire danger index down but where we sit right now here in the middle of august it, it's not looking good joel you know, the coyotes may love it, uh, yeah. but the pheasants won't love it. And, and so I, I want to ask you about this. I want to ask you about the flyway uh, because, you know, that can change. Yeah. Ask the folks up in Kenmere that are watching us right now whether or not that flyway can change. But in, in dry years like this, you know, can they just fly through? Yeah. I mean, can, can they just say, you know what, North Dakota, I'm going to rock and roll and keep on going. Uh, what, what's game and fish? What are you seeing? They have to have a couple things. They have to have food. They have to have something to eat, and they have to have water. And if they don't have that, they've got to go someplace that does have it. So, you know, in terms of scouting, that's what you're going to have. We don't, we've done that just ourselves is where did you go this summer? Places that had water. And, and that's what the critters are going to be doing. And that's what you're going to find this fall is, you know, if you don't have the water and you're, you're a duck hunter, you're going to be finding someplace else to go. If, if you don't have the habitat and you're a pheasant, you're going someplace else. Same thing with deer, which, I, again, maybe not as dramatic as our mind might think it, but I think it's going to produce some areas, you know, whether it's in the southeast or the northwest, where you're going to see that natural gravitation of game and hunters you know the hunters are going to follow the game the game is going to go where the where the grassland is and where the water is which again it's just the changing dynamics of of what the the hand that we've been dealt is gonna is gonna play out you know what my tell is doug that that i've seen more of this year because i drive around look for game yeah you and i talk a lot about that and uh you know i'm seeing more mink yeah. than I've ever seen before. And and maybe it's because of where I live. I live by a lake and drive around some sloughs. I'm in, I'm in some areas where it's wet. But I think I'm seeing them more because the water's not there yeah. uh, the way it normally would be. And the, the cattails aren't there the way it, it could be. And so yeah. I, I'm, am I being foolish? In no, you're not, that? because it's the same thing. Like when I, when I go to you know areas where I do a morning um, pheasant count, and I think... I'm seeing more pheasants. Well, the reason that I'm seeing more pheasants is because no place for them to hide. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's just the, you know, the fundamental basic principles. You might be seeing more. There might not actually be more numbers. It might just be more visible. You might see a slew, um, you know, here in September when we, when we start getting into, you know, some teal hunting. Go, wow, that slew's full of ducks. Yeah, because there's no place else for them to go. And, and that's kind of the, the fallout from what we've got. You know, there's a window, too, in one of the things that... I love to hunt, and then I miss to hunt. Uh, not I, I miss hunting it yeah. is probably the way to put it, and that's dove. Yeah. I, I love to eat dove. I, I, you know, when you go out and you hunt dove, and you hunt it the right way, yeah. you know, and you're not one of these guys shooting them off the lines. Right. Right, you're getting after it. Uh, people forget you can decoy them in. Yeah. People forget that you can go where there is water, and, and they're going to find water as well. Yep. But 
if you were able to hit Dub in the air, <laughs> pheasants look like a Newman sign. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I mean, when you by the time you get pheasant hunting, there'll be none of this. How the heck did I miss that? I mean, doves yeah. are great practice. It, it, it's a, and that's one of the things that maybe we lost a little bit with these early Canada goose hunts. Is you know you go from shooting seven forty sevens to shooting these little you know at these little missiles, and you know if if you can get a meal, uh, if you can get a limit of doves out of a box of shells, you're you're doing yeah. very well, and. I, I think, you know, hunting as a sport lost a little bit because you did. You started off, you'd shoot doves, and then partridge would open up. And by the time you got to, to mallards and even snow geese, you're like, well, this is easy. You know, these things right. are flying so slow. And that, that's one of, the, you know, one of the traditions we've lost a little bit because we have so many opportunities with Canada geese in August. People will go out and shoot Canada geese. And hopefully, hopefully again, we'll get more people to go after doves opening up, Joel. This is the only time that I get to use my 410 a lot, too. Yeah. I don't want to blast the heck out of them. And I just, yep. I, it, 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 they leave early. Yeah. We get a cold snap. Gone. Yep, exactly. And you'd think that they'd hang out more just for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to work that way, but you got to enjoy them while they're here. And early September, that's the time to get out and do it, Joel. You know, we're talking about fall a lot. In about the 30 seconds we have left, uh, there's still some people out there. The docks aren't out. Uh, the lifts aren't out. Yeah. You know, the, the uh, boat safety, are people yeah. practicing it? Yeah, they are. And get those boats and you know out of the water, especially if you haven't been out there for a while. That lake level might have dropped quite a bit, yeah. so you might be wishing you had thought about it earlier. But good reminder to get out there and check it. I can tell you this. With my family, Labor Day. Yeah. If we don't take it out, they don't come back. Yep. Next thing you know, I'm paying a bunch of high school kids to take that boat lift out. No fun to do it by yourself. Exactly. Thanks, Doug. You bet. Appreciate take care. It. Thanks for what you do. North Dakota Game and Fish, ladies and gentlemen, they do a good job, even though I got a doe tag this year. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> I got a deer tag. No whining. When we come back, some closing thoughts for you as we end our trip down the road. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card Information Kit. 1-800-416-5739. Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano. Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. Come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. And I'm coming to you with the most important commercial that I've ever done. All of you know what my pillow and myself have gone through in the last five months in my efforts to bring the truth forward. Well, it's all come down to this. I'm having a cyber symposium on August 10th, 11th, and 12th. This historical event will be live streamed 72 hours straight on my new platform, frankspeech.com. You can help by getting everybody you know to go to frankspeech.com now. To help support this Cyber Symposium event, I am offering some of the best prices ever on my pillow products, but they're only offered at frankspeech.com. Go to frankspeech.com now and use the promo code on your screen 
or call the 1-800 number below to receive these exclusive MyPillow offers. Thank you and God bless. You know, I need to remind myself and do it often, uh, the fact that this is a privilege. It really is. Being on Beck uh, News and having the opportunity to go down the road with you each and every day uh, when I'm able to is a real privilege because we get to share these conversations. I can bring personalities and people to you so that you can hear what they're thinking. And I don't want to forget that. I also have a radio show, and that's a real uh, privilege for me as well. That's what started all this in the media, the radio show. So I want to take this time to thank the individuals for the ratings that came in on the radio show. I do. I want to thank them. And the way to thank them is to make sure that they know that I know it's their radio station. People like myself are going to come and go. There's going to be people that sit in the chair that, that I sit in another day. That's just the truth. That's the way it happens. We think we're indispensable. We're not. Uh, you can get other people there to do that job that want to do the job. So let me just say this, to be number one, and number one by far, I mean, to, to bury your competition, to be able to look at ratings like the ones that we just had, and in the news talk area, be able to beat folks seven to one. I mean, think about that. Think about being able to sit there, look somebody in the eye, and know you delivered the product for them as they go about deciding where they're going to advertise. People are going to say to you, you know, holy cow, I had the top ratings. You know what? These ratings don't lie. You get them from Nielsen. These ratings tell the truth of the surveys that they do. Not to mention this, and I want to keep this in mind, right? I hope you just keep remembering this. Find out what an ad costs. And if an ad is cheap, they don't have good ratings. <laughs> and that happens a lot from people that tell you they have good ratings. The reason that we do well, both here and on the radio, is we talk about you and we talk about where you live. We're not sitting there talking about national affairs each and every day and sitting there and, and talking about things that are just of interest to us. We try to make sure that we can bring things that are of interest to you. And as long as we continue to do that, as long as we continue with that focus, we're going to continue to be number one. Good riding with you, folks. We'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. And as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.